All right, Shalom, good morning, Boaz here. Uh, well, looking out into the world and seeing what's going on, and apparently it seems as though we've gone from uh, experimental medical treatments to war. And it was interesting, you know, like I told you a couple of uh, weeks ago, they took down two videos They uh, and put a strike on the channel. Uh, one's talking about experimental treatments and another one about homeschooling. And that tells you uh, exactly what's going on. Because, see, if something is the truth, then you shouldn't have any problem voicing your uh, perspective or opinion on that matter. Of course, uh, we're supposed to be in this country and we're supposed to have a First Amendment. We're supposed to have a Second Amendment. We're supposed to have a Third, Fourth Amendment. And, 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 and what we're seeing time and time again is the eroding of our freedoms that we just really don't have these freedoms like they claim that we do. And now all of these things have gone away in terms of experimental treatments. Now we're into war. And what we're seeing with this global economy is how something that can be going on on the other side of this planet can affect you right here. A lot of people don't realize uh, the importance of uh, imports because we've become more and more dependent on other countries in order to feed ourselves, in order to clothe ourselves, in order to um, uh, drive our cars, so forth and so on. And, and, and this uh, interdependence, and it's not a good interdependence, no, the, this foreign dependence, I'm not even going to call it interdependence, I'm calling it foreign dependence, is creeping up and it's going to devastate the average American as it has been doing right now. Many people have seen this coming uh, years ago and we've shouted, we've warned, we've uh, given living examples. Uh, we've done all of these things. And YouTubers have done all of these things and the vast majority of people have gone on like nothing is going on, that everything is fine. Uh, and they are adjusting to their two, their new levels of tyranny. Because they could afford $2 a gallon gas. Uh, they can afford $2.50 a gallon gas. Uh, but will they be able to afford $4 a gallon gas, $5 a gallon gas, $6 a gallon gas? And now it's hitting people in the face and people are going to be put in compromising situations where, hey, you know, uh, when that belly start hitting that spine, what are you going to do to provide for you and your family? And this is why we say get out the city. Uh, uh, be in an environment and so where you can be self-sufficient because, you know, it's amazing when I go out of this uh, particular little small homestead that I'm on, uh, a modest little 5.9 acres, and I drive out around and I see uh, other properties fenced off. I see greenhouses, I see sheep and goats running around, I see cattle running around, um, I see local businesses or people that have businesses on their land, uh, I see an environment that people have produced for themselves and their families over generations where they know how to be self-sufficient. They know how to uh, produce. And 
you know, we say over and over again, you know, what do you think is going to happen to city when people do not know or the 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 food is not there? You know, it's predicted, I think, past, uh, you know, past the year, he, he predicted that there's going to be food on the shelves. But the problem is that there's not going to be uh, people that's going to be able to afford that food on the shelves. Just like gas, I firmly believe that there's always going to be gas at the pump. The key is, is that the average American is not going to be able to afford that gas at the pump. See, when rich people, they go, it doesn't matter to them, $5 a gallon gas. You know, it's such a small percentage of their total income. But you and I, uh, it has an effect. And this is why I say over and over and over again to develop a local economy. Um, it's good to have internet commerce and all of that stuff, but you see how this stuff is getting shut down. You know, I'm watching a Canadian proper, you know, his business is being affected because he can no longer get the goods and services uh, that he needs in order to supply certain uh, uh, products that are in high demand, uh, particularly from Russia. He had to cancel all those orders. That affects his business. Uh, and, you know, interesting, you know, I, I sell sheep. I sell, you know, grow organic sheep and in the past, I've been able to box it up in a, uh, uh, you can ship meat, you know, you can, you can ship meat via, uh, United States Postal Service. And the last time I got a brother said, you know, Hey, you know, I want to, you know, buy sheep. And I said, fine. Uh, and I went and looked at the prices to ship, uh, a package of frozen lamb that I got processed and I got to probably got eight more out in the field that I got to get processed over the, uh, before fall to get them fattened up first. But the price was just so prohibitive. It was like 90, a hundred dollars just to ship. And I'm like, wow. And people think that these prices are going to go down. The people think that these prices are going to uh, adjust. No, no. The price of everything is going up. Wood is going up. Gas is going up. Tools are going up. Uh, uh, food is going up. And the only way to deal with this thing effectively, this situation effectively, is making sure that you are decreasing your expenses and increasing your income. Uh by the summer, my income, uh, my expenses will be the lowest that they've ever been in my entire life. You're talking about $500 under. I mean, th that's just phenomenal. And the reason why I'm able to do that is two things. First, I am a fiscally responsible man. Uh, and number two, uh, I have a wife that knows how to deal with the finances effectively. Being that, you know, we're not going out and we're spending frivolously. We're not wasting money. We're not uh, uh, doing things that uh, will put us in a situation or a bind later on. And if you don't have fiscal responsibility, if you can't make the sacrifices now, um, you're going to suffer later. And the beautiful thing about these situations is that, you know, as we become more and more successful in the business side and decrease our expenses, that gives us more disposable income. It gives us more uh, uh, resources uh, to go out and get things uh, that we need, like solar panels, like uh, extra batteries and inverters and things like that so that we can further get off uh, the dependence of this system. You know, I look at the uh, electric bill. We pay about, uh, the electric bill runs about $110 or the max $120 a month. However, when you look at the bill, uh, about 40 to $50 of that are fees. So I'm really using about 60 bucks worth of energy, but I have to pay them an extra 50 bucks in order to get that energy.
This is crazy. This is crazy. And the energy and these fees are going up. Taxes are going up. Everything is going up. That they're going to put and levy on the people because of all of this inflation, all of this money printing. We're going to have to learn. Um, and many people are going to learn the hard way. That's just how it is. But people that understand and get it, uh, they're going to move in such a way where uh, they're going to uh, be more conservative with how they spend their money. They're going to develop uh, local, ba you know, locally based businesses to help them uh, weather the storm. You look at Great Depression uh, testimonies and who were the people that were surviving? The people that own land and that was self-sufficient. The people that didn't depend on the system for anything. Sure, they didn't have much, but they had each other. And they didn't have to worry about losing their farm or losing their land because it was paid for. You see, all these people say, get out, you know, getting all this debt to get all of this property or whatever. What happens when you can't pay the note? See, you know, and, and learning the difference between secured and unsecured debt. Hey, you don't pay that note. They come and they take the property. So we have to get wiser uh, as this system continues to collapse and put a stranglehold on people. Now, a lot of people are just not going to get it. They're just going to go on doing what they're doing, thinking that they can adjust until they can't adjust no more. But uh, for those who have resources, uh, skill sets, you need to be thinking on these lines and it's going to be a sacrifice short term um you know i say over and over again what i do and how i move and what i drive and how i live is a true representation of uh my social economic situation because you know i'm not in debt you know i mean all of this stuff is paid for so i don't have to worry about anybody coming to try and take it from me as a direct result of not being able to pay somebody um, a monthly payment. Uh, it's sad to see uh, the the struggles that are taking place that I'm seeing in people that uh, I've known, but the pain and suffering to come. Be wise. Uh, what the scripture says: So for a wise man foreseeth the evil and prepares his house. Uh, you know, this is prepare your house because nobody else is going to do it for you. And you don't want to be in a situation where you're dependent on government for your livelihood. Because, see, when you're dependent like that, you have to go with the flow. You have to do as you're told. Um, and some people, a lot of people are going to go that way because that's how they live their lives. Um no, but that's not how I live mine. 